Richie, start with a health check. How is everyone? Any injuries? Uh, no, actually, everybody's really good, to be fair. Um, we've got Chesney back on the grass. Um, I've seen a few photos of Birdie been knocking around recently in terms of him doing some running as well. So uh, he's coming, coming along quite well. But in terms of the ones who've been playing recently, no, everybody's fine. Good news. Um, what's the assessment of, of Tuesday, 36 or, or so hours on? Um, well, I think the most important thing was the win. Um, and I think obviously we would have all been disappointed had we not won the game. And I know that I, I spoke before the game about the expectations in some of the games that we play at Pride Park of, uh, of, of people think, well, you should win games like that. And I, I do get that. I, you know, we understand the expectations. But, you know, one of the things we often talk about is good teams don't lose two games in a row. And you, winning's a habit and losing's a habit. When you're in the winning habit, you've got to keep it. If you've lost a game, you need to ensure that doesn't become a habit. So the most important thing was the result. I thought in terms of the actual game, I thought box to box, I thought we were pretty well, pretty good. I thought the pressing was good. I thought we limited them to very few chances. Um, and I thought the way we moved the ball about was pretty good. However, you know, certainly for the first half an hour, not enough creativity. We've talked to you before about how your focus a lot of the time is, is on the defensive side of the game. And, and that was really where a lot of the success was built on over, over the last few weeks. So how pleased were you with, with getting another clean sheet? Yeah, and, and that's good, not just in terms of um, doing the right things, but in terms of a confidence, in terms of ensuring that, you know, we're trying to say that, look, the Barnsley game was a blip. And it's easy to say that, but you've got to prove it and you've got to ensure that you get back to doing the right things again. And, you know, when we talk about the defending, as we've, we've mentioned before, defending comes right from the very top of the pitch comes from winning the ball back higher up the pitch, it comes from being organised, it comes from, it's not just the stuff that people see, which is, you know, last ditch tackles or clearances or stopping crosses. Defending works as a team right from the top of the pitch. So that was important that we won the ball back higher up, we were more organised, we sustained attacks. Um, but from a confidence point of view, from the back four, and obviously from Joe's point of view, then, you know, it was important that we just say, look, that is a blip and we move on. I wanted to ask about one of your defenders in particular. Saturday is going to mark 10 years since Craig Forsyth joined the club. That's some achievement in, in the modern game. Well, it is certainly in the modern game. I agree with that. You know, I think if you'd have had that conversation 25, 30 years ago, um, very rarely do you see people get to 10 years, testimonials, things like that. Um, just really because, football, well, the world's become a smaller place. It's a lot easier to travel around, you know. Um, you know, if he's particularly from Fozzie's point of view, living in the Midlands, you know, it'd been quite easy for him to go and go and play somewhere else. Um, as a servant for the club, amazing. You know, obviously we've only had five months with him or whatever it is. As a person, he's literally one of the nicest people I've ever met. I can't believe that anyone's got any bad words for him because he doesn't say a lot, but when he speaks, you know, people listen. His standing within this football club is obviously, you know, to, to go 10 years is amazing. Um, but to reinvent himself the way that he has this year um, at whatever he is now, 33-ish or something like that, but be receptive to go, look, to, as a left-back, mate, can you play right centre-half? Yeah, OK, go on, I'll give it a go. You know, of where a lot of people would have gone, look, I'm in my testimonial year or I'm in my 10th year or whatever it is, and that's not for me. And he didn't, and he just got on with it. And it's, I hope, hopefully, and I, one of the things I quite like, we you give younger players an opportunity to go off and, you know, you sell them or they get a better move or they become internationals. But to give older players, and I'm talking about players on the wrong side of 30, opportunities to live um, a, a life where they play for longer, um, you know, is something that we take pride in as well. But he has to buy into that and he has done. He's done amazing. Is it important, because we always get excited by youth and, and potential, is it important that you, we almost don't neglect maybe slightly older players and, and, and forget what they have to offer? Well, he's got a whole world of experience that he can pass on to. You know, uh, we've got, I think it's eight or nine players, 22 and under or something like that. So he, uh, but not just in terms of what he says, just the way he goes about his business on a daily basis. You know, like I said, there's no airs and graces about him. There's no, you know, great fanfare and trumpet when he comes in. It's... It's just like, he's just fuzzy and he's just um, something that I think the fans should be very proud of. He certainly and his family should be very proud of. But as a football club, 
like I can't, I can only speak for the last five months. I can't speak for the last nine and a half years. But what a, what an unbelievable servant he's been for um, in, in a time when there's been really difficult times at the football club. Some really great times, I get that, but some really difficult times. And um, for him to have stuck through that and, like I say, you know, and keep going and reinvent himself a couple of times. And I know what it's like when you've been there ten years. Paul Hurst, who you know had a great result last night as Grimsby manager, played with us at Rotherham United for 17 years, I think it was. And every year, a new left-back got signed, and it'd be like, well, Hurst, he won't be good enough this year. And then three games in, he gets back in, and he plays the next 40 games. And I'm, I don't know how many left-backs Fozzie's seen off at this club, but I'm sure most managers have probably thought, well, we need a new left-back, we can't trust Fozzie. Ten years later, he's still here, and he's still playing and captain, which is you know amazing. Let's look ahead to, to Saturday. Um, Steve Cottrell was at the game on, on Tuesday night. Do you like to get out and see teams in person when you can? Yeah, and it's no surprise that somebody who's been doing the job as long as he has has taken the opportunity to come and watch us. Uh, that doesn't surprise me with him at all. You know, He's a proper football person who's probably been a manager for nearly 25 years or something now. So, um, But yeah, it's fine. Look, sometimes it doesn't always allow you, whether it's to do with timings or locations or whatever it is, but... If you can, you learn a lot more than just watching videos. You learn about the way that the players are when things aren't going very well, or how, you know, the atmosphere affects them, or you know, a, a change of um, momentum within the game. So uh, yeah, it's, it is pretty important if you can do it. His side are on on a good run at the moment. Are they playoff contenders after the few weeks they've had now? I think they are. Yeah, and and bear in mind, I don't know for. Ex exact but I would imagine I think they were in around the relegation zone when Steve took over so um, you know in terms of the amount of time that he's been there and now to go from relegation contenders to playoff contenders is 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 a, a, an excellent job of which by the way you know we're not talking about a club with a bottomless pit here we're talking about a, um, you know a league one club who have predominantly spent the last few years in the bottom half of the league so uh, so he's done a great job and yeah they are playoff absolutely the playoff contenders because we keep saying that Peterborough are or Portsmouth are or well they're in the same place as them so and the run that they're on um, definitely means that if they can continue that they're, and it's going to be a really tough game.